Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashton. I'm Jonathan. And along with our son Jack in the back seat, we're the Black Forest family. Now, we've lived in Germany for quite a number of years and driven a lot of miles and kilometers in this country, but we thought it'd be a really fun video today if we took you along for a ride and showed you the ins and outs of what it's like driving here in Germany. And we'll also be driving in the United States to show you that there are some differences. Okay, so first things first. I think that one of the most noticeable differences for both Jonathan and I when we first moved to Germany in regards to the drivers was just how disciplined they are, especially when it comes to the rule that you pass on the left and you drive on the right. Yeah, so in Germany and really most of Europe, driving in the left on the highway or the Autobahn is used exclusively for passing. Although this is a rule for really every single country, Germany follows it all of the time. You'll notice when you're driving down the Autobahn, you pass somebody, everybody moves over to the right as soon as possible to give right of way to the faster drivers from behind. So when you're driving down the Autobahn, it is really a much less stressful experience knowing what everybody's gonna be doing in front of you. You can anticipate other drivers very easily. But you know, technically this is also illegal here in the United States. You're supposed to pass on the left and drive on the right, but I feel like it's a law that nobody at all pays attention to. Yeah, and you know, unfortunately it leads to a lot of road rage and a lot of very aggressive driving and it forces people to pass on the right, which is also illegal, so it really doesn't make any sense. In Germany, the stoplights are on your end of the intersection, not on the other side of the street. So honestly, for me, a lot of times it's actually hard to see what color the light is. Often you have to lean forward and look and kind of hold this position until you get the yellow and then the green light. Yeah, and you know, the cars tend to be a little bit smaller in Europe anyway, which I feel like almost exaggerates this issue. When you're in a tiny car and you're right at the line of the intersection, you're, you're really usually reaching your neck up to make sure that you can see it properly. So in the United States, stoplights are wonderful. They are on the other side of the intersection, meaning I can just sit here comfortably relaxed in my seat and I can perfectly see whether they're red, yellow, or green. Yeah, so I think if there's actually a ranking going on on what Germany wins and what the United States wins at, I think largely for driving, it's much better in Germany, but this is the one thing about driving in the United States that to me, it makes a lot of sense. It's so much better. I wouldn't say that is the only thing that America does better with driving. It is also turning right on red. Okay, yeah, fair. That's a fair point. For example, right now the light is red. I just look to my left to see if anybody's coming. There are quite a few cars coming, but when nobody's coming, I'm free to just continue on my journey, turn right and go. Look at that, the light is red. I am free and clear to go. Nobody's coming. I'm not crossing traffic. I'm not getting in anybody's way. Why is this not <laughs> something that other countries pick up? It seems perfectly <laughs> safe to me. Americans beware. You cannot turn right on red unless otherwise indicated. So if you come up to a red light, nobody's coming. You just have to sit and wait. All right, so next up on our list are the rules of the road. And in Germany, these rules are followed to the T. Yeah, so not following the rules of the road will either get you a steep fine from the police eye or a stern warning from the other drivers, whether it's honking or yelling at you or my personal favorite. Yeah, they'll, uh, they'll be sure to let you know when you mess up. So let's be honest, turn signals in the United States are optional and speed limits are just suggestions. <laughs> and yeah, the left lane is often just a cruising lane. It's not a passing lane like it was originally intended. Yeah, I'd like to think that there are some really great drivers in the United States, but to be honest, um, sometimes the rules are more or less just guidelines. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. So in Germany, it is very important to be observant and keep an eye out for speed cameras because they are often placed all throughout the city. In addition to like the fixed speed cameras, it is also possible that the police will have vans that they set on the side of the street and those vans will have cameras inside of them. And they will also set out cameras randomly out on highways or roads, also connected to a van. And if you're speeding, they'll get a picture of you. That picture will come to you in the mail. However, in the United States, you kind of have to be like on spy mode all the time looking out for cop cars seeing if they're doing any radar shooting because oftentimes especially on the highway 
they will pull off into a small little nook and sit there with their gun or they're like wait on the other side of a hill waiting for you to oh, come yeah. back down the other or, side or behind a building there's always right. somebody there at yes. least in your mind you think there's somebody there yeah totally different but yeah it happens all the time yeah and then they'll basically chase you down lights and sirens give you a ticket i guess i was going about 65 tops seven seven miles an hour and normally when i stop people they pull onto the shoulder Okay, so don't get me wrong, you can definitely find SUVs and large vehicles in Germany, but in comparison to the United States, I would say that here they are far fewer and much harder to find. Yeah, on average the vehicles here are far smaller than the United States and it's really offset by a lot of smart cars and compact sedans, um, things like that. And the car we're in right now, which is a wagon, is actually probably the most popular. So we get it. Everything is bigger in the United States. The houses, the people to some extent, and the cars are definitely no exception. Yeah, in the United States, they're often massive trucks, massive SUVs, and it's not just having a truck that's enough. Many people will modify the trucks, lift yeah. them, put bigger tires on them all over the place. You'll see this everywhere. Yeah, I grew up in the country and very much having a giant pickup truck with big mud tires was definitely a status symbol. What is you that? Need that? It's my ladder. You bought something you can't get into or out of without a ladder? It's very high up. Hammond, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's brilliant. Look at it. So, yeah, and I mean, even now we're here in Kansas City. It's definitely not the country, but it's still the Midwest, and you're going to see big pickup trucks everywhere you go. All over the place, and full-size SUVs. Okay, so I know it's a bit ironic with this next point because we're driving in a car, but actually driving in general, especially in large cities, is a lot less frequent as it is in the United States because in Europe, cities are a lot more dense. It's much more common that if you drive, you drive to a large parking structure or a parking lot, and then you get out and walk to all of your destinations. So as Ashton said, driving in Germany isn't really all that common when you're trying to go just place to place and do some shopping, especially in the city center. And for me, this is often a very stressful experience. And I would rather just go by bike or by foot or with public transit because the parking spaces are often very hard to come by. On the weekends, the parking structures are usually built. You have to stop and wait outside until somebody leaves. And then you can go in and try to find that spot. So there's one thing you need to be aware of in Germany, and that's the roads are very, very tight. Oh my goodness. It's very common that roads will be one way. They barely fit the width of a car. And also people drive mirror to mirror at 30 kilometers an hour through villages frequently. It can often be a very stressful experience when you're not used to it. Yeah, I actually would think that by American standards, oftentimes roads that are two ways for two vehicles, these roads would be considered a one-way street in the United States. Yeah. yeah, so the streets in the United States they're massive. <laughs> yeah, and as you've seen, the vehicles in the United States are often quite large, so there is plenty of space to navigate them around. Okay, so I'm a car guy. One of my favorite things about being here and driving is the lack of speed limits on the Autobahn. I know not all of the Autobahn is unlimited. A good percentage of it does have an actual speed limit, but for gearheads or people like me who love cars and driving, it is quite the experience. Yeah, and as a passenger, I can only say it is quite something to get used to when he floors it. Jeez. Oh, I don't think that's ever going to get old. Yeah, but that brings up another interesting point about speed limits. Germany and all European countries have default speed limits. They're not always speed limits posted where you are. When you approach a city, for example, you'll see the city limit sign, and that city limit sign automatically means you need to be driving 50 kilometers an hour. So it's not like the United States where you'll actually see posted speed limits. Germany, you need to know what they are before you get there. And if you don't know, do what I do and just follow the person in front of you because they are probably following the rules, but make sure they have a German license plate. However, speed limits in the United States are actually quite conservative, particularly on the highway. In Illinois, where I'm from, the speed limit is 70 miles an hour, but here in Kansas, it's 75 miles an hour. But even with that addition, it's really only about 120 kilometers per hour. 
Yeah, which really isn't very fast. And I think the other important point here is like Germany, for example, has default speed limits, whether you're on a highway, city, rural area. And in the United States, you need to follow the posted speed limits because they can vary greatly wherever you are. Um, however, if you're on the highway and nothing's posted, it is a default 55 miles an hour. So as a cyclist, one of the things I love most about being here is how safe I feel on a bicycle. There are often bike lanes scattered all through cities. There's separated bike lanes really all over the place. I know it's not really on the same level as the Netherlands, but for our American viewers, Germany is by far better in regards to bicycle safety and infrastructure. And actually, like we said in our cycling in Germany video, one of the things that I actually find that makes me feel so much safer on the road is that I think that German drivers legitimately look for bicycles, at least a lot more frequently. Especially if they're turning left or right on a road, they're going to look to see if a bicycle is coming before they make that turn. Yeah, they're always gonna be anticipating a bicycle there. In the United States, although they are building some bicycle infrastructure, they, are, they, uh, they have a long way to go. Um, there are often bike lanes like Sharrows, basically they're painted on the road that they should be sep sectioning bicycles and vehicles. However, from my experience while riding and driving, people just use them as like suggested turning lanes, which is not what they're there for. But. <laughs> Long way to go, I would say. Okay, so probably one of the other things that we've really noticed as Americans driving in Germany is this situation right here. We're pulling up to a four-way stop, and in Germany, rather than having a stop sign, it is Rex for links. So the person on the right has right of way. Now, of course, in Germany as well, they have a lot of roundabouts. Every once in a while, you will see a stop sign. But this etiquette of approaching an intersection and always giving right of way to the person on the right was actually something that was quite new for us. So United States has four-way stops or three-way stops with stop signs. And the way these work is you race to the stop sign. The first person there gets to go first. That's basically it. Yeah, I'd like to say that driver's education taught us that there is an etiquette to this, but in reality, it's usually either whoever is there first gets to go first, or what happens more frequently, the person with the bigger car forces their way into first place. Yeah, and these intersections <laughs> will almost always have stop signs. Like That's an important thing to point out, too. Okay, so one of the other differences as an American who now drives in Germany, I was actually really surprised to learn that the driving age in Germany is 18. I don't know, I guess I just have kind of found that the whole getting your driver's license and your first car, it's such a rite of passage in the United States, but it doesn't really seem to hold the same value here in Germany. So in the United States, driving ages are quite young, actually. I was 14 years old and I had a driving permit, meaning I could drive around with my mom but 14 years old. And when I turned 16, I was allowed to get a driver's license and drive around by myself. Ah! Ah! Get out, boys! I'm gonna R-U-N-N-O-F-T! Yeah, it's actually kind of scary. I feel like when I was 16 and I got my driver's license, I felt so old, but now that I'm an adult and I see these just children that look like babies behind the wheel, it's... It's quite alarming as a parent. Yeah, looking back on it now, like I can't believe 14 years old is legal. <laughs> I sound like such a parent right now. Okay, so last but not least, I think we should actually talk about the differences in getting a driver's license and the requirements that go along with it here in Germany. As you probably could imagine if you're an American watching this video, it's a lot more difficult to get your driver's license in Germany. It requires a significant amount of hours driving around with an instructor. You have a written test. You need, even need to learn CPR. You need to learn first aid. Yeah, and interestingly enough, um, you actually take driving lessons with a certified driving instructor from a third-party company in Germany. You'll see them driving all around town in their like well-marked vehicles, but they're actually like a separate company and separate entity altogether. So I really think it's actually quite ironic because my experience of getting a driver's license in the United States was totally different from Jonathan's. And I, in a weird way, think that really sums up what it's actually like to drive in the United States. 
for me, I was required to take a driving test that was part of our school curriculum. I had to log an entire semester of driving hours with like a driving professional. I then had to sit for an exam that I had to pass before I could even go to the Department of Motor Vehicles to get my driver's license. Yeah, all I had to do was because I had the permit when I was 14 years old, I had a certain number of hours I had to do with my mom in the car. And then I got to go to the DMV. I had to take a, um, a, a vision test and I had a written test that was very easy that I could take over and over again the same day if I failed it. And I had to drive around the block with an instructor in the car. Really, really easy. You know, in all honesty, I actually think this is a pretty decent example, I think, of why maybe American drivers just, quite frankly, aren't as good of drivers as German drivers, because there really isn't a standard across the country on education requirements. You don't have to know how to drive to have a driver's license. That's the scariest thing. All right, guys, thank you so much for riding along with us today on this video. We hope that you found it to be kind of fun to just see what the differences between driving in Germany and driving here in the United States exactly are. Yep, and if you liked what you saw today, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So, until next time. This bald. Cheers.